Does asking for money terrify you? Have you ever wanted to run a fundraiser, but you just didn't know where to start? After today, you don't have to worry any longer because we're going to make you a fundraising ace. In this episode, you'll learn from experts how simple fundraising can be. Then we have the pleasure of hearing from John Davis, who is in contact with over 40,000 donors for the Leadership Institute. My name is Tiffany Roberts from the Leadership Institute, and you're listening to the Lead Your Future podcast. Are you a college student or recent graduate frustrated by the lack of internship opportunities due to coronavirus? While many organizations have disbanded their internship programs, the Leadership Institute has pivoted online. Yes, you can intern with the Leadership Institute from the comfort of your own home. Visit leadershipinstitute.org slash internship to learn more. Hey guys, welcome to the Lead Your Future podcast. If you're enjoying these episodes and this podcast, please click the subscribe button and feel free to leave a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Leadership Institute and on Twitter at Leadership I-N-S-T. Do you have a topic that you're just dying to hear me talk about? Feel free to shoot me an email at troberts at leadershipinstitute.org and I'd be happy to make that happen. Now on to today's episode. So what's the big deal about fundraising anyway? If you care deeply about a cause or a movement, you should learn to fundraise. Whether you're in the workplace or in school, effective fundraising is the key to success of a cause, movement, or organization. Do you want to leg up in the workplace? 60% of CEOs and 58% of board chairs identify fundraising as one of the most important areas for board improvement. And according to the State Department of Australia, Fundraising is a cornerstone of any organization, the difference between a bright, promising future and a threat to its very existence. So let's teach you to be an ace by understanding the adventure, commitment, and execution of excellent fundraising practices. First up in our acronym ACE, we have adventure. You're not just out here asking for money. You are on a mission. An effective fundraiser understands the cause of their organization and believes it in their core. You're not asking the prospect for help, but you're inviting them to join you on a quest to make individual lives, the community, or the entire world brighter for everyone. Entrepreneur and writer Seth Godin explains how in fundraising, you have to be telling a story. If your cause isn't important to you, you may as well just go home. Know exactly where the money is going towards and understand the measurable impacts that it will produce. Be ready to explain these things and adopt a mindset where you can thoroughly communicate just why it's so important. Remember, you're not asking for help. You're inviting others to join you on a vital mission. The second letter in our acronym ACE, we have commitment. So how can you demonstrate just how much your cause means to you? First, conquer your fears. It can be intimidating to ask for money, but remember that you're fighting for something noble and worthwhile which means you have nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to fear. Next, be sure you've already donated yourself. The psychological concept known as the sunk cost effect shows that you will actually care more about your cause if you've donated before. This will also make people much more willing to give. Another key part of commitment is research. Make sure you know everything you can about your cause and keep your information up to date. Get ideas of how much people give on average based on factors like demographics, clothing, work, etc. and use that information. You can also ask for specific amounts and always push them towards a higher threshold. Finally, don't be afraid of no's. Professional fundraiser and ex-NFL running back Ruben Mays tells us to take heart because facing thousands of no's and staying committed is exactly how you raise millions. Embrace your fear confidently and everyone will respect you for it. Last up in our acronym ACE, we have execution. Our last step is where the real fun begins. Fundraising isn't just asking people for money on the street. If you want people to give, get them in a good mood. So get everyone together and have a party. Competitions like running, biking, cornhole, relays, and challenges can be an excellent way to charge an entry fee and get people having a great time. You can also hold silent auctions and wine tasting for your refined crowds. Casino nights are always a hit, 
If you charge for chips and make the prizes priceless experiences like throwing a pie in the boss's face or wearing pajamas to work, then you really maximize proceeds and everyone has a great time. If you want to change the world, wild, far-fetched dreams and goals may be closer and far more accessible than you think. The biggest difference between a cause that leaves an impact and one that fades in a whimper is whether or not you can put your money where your mouth is. And now you know how. Now that's it for my half of this episode. Stay tuned just in a minute. I'm going to sit down with John Davis, and he's going to give you some of his insight on fundraising and how to make it big. Are you looking to launch your career? Do you want to gain real, professional experience while sharpening your media skills? Then apply today to be a studio's intern here at the Leadership Institute. As a studio's intern, you'll master Adobe programs and get behind the scenes access to media professions across the board. Just go to leadershipinstitute.org and click on the career tab to learn more. That's leadershipinstitute.org and click on the career tab to learn more. Welcome back, everyone. I am now here with John Davis. He is the Director of Donor Communications here at the Leadership Institute. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So could you just kind of tell us what you do at the Leadership Institute as the Director of Donor Communications? Uh, I get to tell everybody about how great the Leadership Institute is. <laughs> I, I get to work with a lot of our donors. Everything we do is possible because LI is donor funded. Actually, some many people don't know this, but only about 3% of our overall revenue comes from tuition that students pay to attend. And the rest is funded by donors who care about the future of our country, who want to have strong conservative leaders. And so I get to spend my days uh, telling donors about what we're doing with their money, telling donors who are people who are not yet donors, uh, what they could accomplish if if they joined with us. And I'm a, such a huge believer in the Leadership Institute that it's, it's, I love every day of it. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I do think a lot of people don't know that a lot of our revenue does come from donations. So it's why people like you are so important because you're the one who keeps us running. Um, could you kind of, you, you're very experienced in what you do. So could you kind of just give us an idea of what were some of the biggest challenges you've had with um, maybe getting started in fundraising and how you maybe overcame them? So I came over in 2009, right in the middle of the Great Recession, uh, right at a, at a point where the Leadership Institute was really asking, what is it going to become? And, and when fundraising was crucial and going to define the, the future of the organization. Uh, and so I really wanted to do a good job, but I didn't know anything about what to do. And so the first challenge is figuring out how do you learn? And just like any other skill, uh, you learn by going to mentors people who've done the job before you and learning from them. And we're so lucky at the Leadership Institute to have Morton Blackwell, who not only is a great conservative leader, not only is a great grassroots activist, but also has a deep understanding and appreciation of fundraising and not just fundraising, but fundraising done the right way. And so simply working for Morton overcame a lot of those challenges. Going to Leadership Institute training about how to become a good fundraiser helped overcome those challenges. Reading the books that were recommended um, helped a lot. So that was one challenge, but not long into what I was doing, I found out there was another challenge, which is how do I avoid just falling, falling into the trap of just following best practices, uh, which sounds like a good idea. It sounds like it makes sense, but if all you do is follow best practices, what's going to happen is you're going to put a cookie cutter program in place. And every organization is different. Every donor is different. Good donor relations means uh, understanding that, getting to know your donors, getting to understand who they are and affirming that. And you can't do that if you're just treating everybody the same way because that's a best practice. And so I remember Stephen Sutton uh, he asked, asking me one day, he said, John, uh, what, what was your background? What did you study? And I said, well, I was a philosophy major. He said, great. Well, I was an engineer and I can tell things are broken you're a philosophy guy. I want you to go start asking why. And he said, and don't, he says, I know you don't know that much about what you're doing, but uh, even so, I want you to ask why questions until you understand what we're doing, because we have to do more than operate 
on a best practices theory. Best practices is good. It gets you started and it, and it brings you up to where you want to be. But he said, for us to truly be excellent, for us to truly get to know our donors and know their hearts and address those things, we need to, uh, we need to go to another level and really uh, seek to understand them. And so me not knowing anything, I just started doing that. And I said, well, we're, we're doing these mailings this way. Why are we doing that? And we select lists this way. Why are we doing that? And when we talk to donors, we do these PowerPoint presentations. Why are we doing it that way? And uh, pretty soon in, in some areas, there were really good reasons. And there were some areas where it turns out we were just doing it because that's the way it had always been done. And that's where you find opportunities uh, to, to do better and to really help grow and improve the organization. And so that was so the, the two challenges, which, which almost work in, in opposition to each other or in tension with each other. The one is, how do I learn from others so that I can follow what people who come before me who are wiser have done? And the second one, and the thing I learned from Steve is, how do I not stop at learning from others, but how do I challenge those ideas so that I can uh, do the best for my organization, the Leadership Institute? That is, that's great advice, uh, especially for somebody who might be coming in as a new role into a fundraising uh, position. They should, of course, come with those best practices, but also come with those whys and ask questions. And don't be afraid to ask those questions as well. So I think that's, I think that's what kind of um, puts LI above uh, other organizations that we have that ability to kind of learn from what, what we're doing and from our mistakes and then do better and find a way to, you know, excel at, you know, fundraising, things like that. Absolutely. So I guess my next question is, what are some, I guess you may probably answer some of this, but what are some like illusions with fundraising about fundraising that you can, you know, shatter for us? Uh, probably the, the biggest area that people go wrong when they start out is they view it as a sales role and only a sales role. And so they come in and they say, my job is to raise money. And that, and on the one hand, is a good posture to have, and that's a good level of aggressiveness to have when you're looking at how do you spend your time. So when you're deciding, should I talk to a donor who might give the organization $1,000, or should I talk to a donor who might give the organization $10, the right choice to make is to decide, is to talk to the $1,000 donor. And it's not that the $10 donor doesn't matter, but it's that the organization will advance further, which is in the interest of the $1,000 donor and the $10 donor and the organization and the students that we're doing, if you're able to effectively prioritize your time. Stephen Sutton, my, my boss and mentor, uh, has these notepads that he, he hands out to people on the very top, uh, on the very top, and I believe he said he got these when he was in the Navy. It says at the top, what is the best use of my time right now? And so, we you you have an obligation to the organization to constantly think about how do you apply your time in a way that's going to lead to raising the most net money over the long run because that's what makes it possible for you to accomplish what you're going to do so people come in and they oftentimes absorb that and start off with with that kind of an attitude but that's also the wrong posture heart posture to take when you're actually in front of a donor if you if you're working with a donor, it, it, a donor is in a system. They're not just part of a system. They're a person. You have to treat them like a, like a person and a human being. And one of the things that Morton has is, is taught us is that he, his goal is for the Leadership Institute to treat our donors better than any other organization. And so when you go and you sit down in front of a donor, you're not trying to – your goal in that meeting is not first and foremost, how do I get this person to give me money? What that leads to is a study of techniques. Maybe if I say the magic words, then they'll magically open their wallet and give me money. <laughs> and that isn't um, that that really is, is counter to the dignity of, of of what a person is, and counter to the sort of partnership you want to have with the donors. Truly, we don't have to twist our donors' arms to for them to give money to the Leadership Institute. They're not giving because we know some sort of fancy technique or because we did a really slick sales pitch. Most donors who have capacity uh, are also people who are wise and people who are, are sensitive and aware of people. And if you come in with that attitude, they're also going to know and it's, it's self-defeating, even if it wasn't wrong. 
And so the reason they're giving is because they care about the future of this country. They care about who our future leaders are going to be. They're grateful. They recognize how rare liberty is, how rare the exceptional things that we have in America, our principles that are in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence are, how much it, those principles have given to their lives, and they have a deep desire to pass that on. And so if I'm talking to a donor and, I, and, and I'm able to tell them, here's an opportunity for you to do that, uh, that actually brings them joy. So they're get, I want the donors who I'm talking to to give out of love, to give out of joy, to be excited about what they're giving, to be excited about what they're going to see accomplish. And I can't, uh, I can't do that if I'm, if I'm seeing them first and foremost as an object to get money from. So that's the, um, I, I think that's the probably the most important foundational thing is when you think about your uh, your approach to fundraising is it, mentally preparing and understanding who you are, who the donors are, and that you're in a partnership together. Now, when you sit down and ask and ask the donors, I mean, when you finally get to the point of asking them for the money, have you ever felt intimidated asking for money? I mean, you probably don't anymore because you're, you know, you're the director of donor communications, but I'm sure you have in the past. And it kind of brings me back to my previous episode about salary negotiation, you know, being in that room and having to ask that hard question. Have you ever been intimidated? And what, how, what do you do to get past that? Well, I have an advantage in that a lot of times when I'm asking people for money, I, I get to do it by writing them a letter and asking. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not like Stephen Sutton, who does a lot of these meetings that are in person. Uh, but, but I have been involved in some major asks for the Leadership Institute. And uh, for the most part, they, they've gone really well, e even if the answer is no. The, the meetings themselves have gone really well. Uh, and I think the key is... Uh, understanding when you go in, even if the even if the stakes are high, um, believing that what you're doing is right, that it makes sense, that it's in the interest of the person who's in front of you, and there may be reasons why they say may, say no. It, it may not be the right timing. You might be asking for the wrong amount. It may be a, a project that they're they're not as excited about. Um, and those are those are things you can work on. But if you go in and you believe that you and you have a relationship with the donors and you know what they care about and you've thought about what they care about you can sit in front of them and say tiffany i have been thinking about our conversations and what you've told me about how you feel about the country and what you've told me about the things that are important to you and how grateful you are for america and how much you learned in colleges and why you have a deep a, a deep love for for this type of university maybe in particular and so I was thinking about what we can do to really carry that on so other people can have that experience. Uh, so the people who are going to your university where you went to will have an experience like what you had and have it be better. And uh, I think we came up with a way to do that. And um, here's, here's the way to do it. And what do you think of that? Do you like the idea? And do you not like the idea? And what would you do to make it better? Great, you know, it's going to be $125,000 to do this. Um, is that something, you know, at some point, yeah, I guess you need to think through exactly how to make that ask. But if you arrive at asking for money and you have all those micro yeses along the way, you will usually naturally flow into being able to ask outright. And the donor may say it's not the right amount or it's not the right time, but it's not going, it's not, they're not going to get mad at you. They're not going to be sorry that you thought about these things that they that they could do. Um, so I think if you if you prepare the right way and you're able to go in truly believing that what you're presenting is in the best interest of the donor, that a lot of the fear and a lot of the worry and a lot of the nervousness goes away. Yeah, it's exactly what you said earlier about, you know, thinking of, about them as a relationship and not just as an object and that you're asking for money from them. I it makes it makes kind of makes me think of my dad. He's a financial advisor and I, he does a great he does so well at what he does and it, the reason why is because he treats these people like they're his friends, which they are in the end. A lot of them are his friends. They exchange, you know, Christmas cards and things like that. And he still goes to their houses and like pulls up in the driveway and meets with them in their own homes. And that's something that we lose a lot in nowadays. People just don't, you know, 
take time to meet each other in person and everything happens over the phone or over the mail. But having a conversation with somebody as it's a relationship is very important. Absolutely. That, and that's the key to really effective fundraising and uh, effective fundraising over the long run. So another illusion that people have is that raising money right now is the right approach. And uh, although it's great to raise money right now, and there's many reasons why, uh, why you would want to raise money right now, if you prioritize everything on the short term, you're going to raise less money over the long run. And you can do actions that seem optimized for the short, for the short run that ultimately don't pay off. So the NRCC sent out a text message the other day asking for money. And it says in, uh, in all caps, you failed. <laughs> it says you failed to use your 500% match and it expired. 15 Trump patriots were chosen. Why did you let us down? This is your final chance. 500% match for one hour. Here's the link. Uh, that's aggressive. <laughs> it's really aggressive. And so people, of course, said, you know, what are you, what are you doing and what are you talking about? And the NRCC responded not by saying um, maybe that was too aggressive. Uh, but by saying, you know what, this text raised $198,021 towards electing conservatives to Congress. And that was their uh, justification for why they thought it was okay to do that. And um, basically what they're saying is that if I, if I do something and I can prove to you empirically it's going to raise money, then that justifies the technique. That's usually very short-term thinking because when you take that sort of an approach to fundraising, you can actually justify things over the short run, um, but often what you're doing is you're upsetting so many donors. So you can count – this is the way Morton talks about things like this. He says you can count the money that comes in right away, but what you can't count is all the donations that aren't going to come in for years and years and years because you've upset so many of your donors. So – Insulting your donors is a bad fundraising strategy. <laughs> <laughs> that is good advice. <laughs> even though even though it can work in the short run. And so at the Leadership Institute, and one of the things I've learned from Morton is uh, you will advance your cause and you will advance your mission much, much, much more if you focus on raising money over the long run rather than under the short run. And that then leads to decision making. Uh, that says, let me, when a donor makes a donation, let me say thank you and not say, thanks for your donation. Here's your check. Here's your thing. Will you give me another donation? And some people say, well, if you ask them for another donation, as soon as you, with the thank you letter for that donation, they'll give you, some people will give you another donation and you're raising more money and you're advancing your mission. And isn't that a good thing? Um, and the answer is kind of, yes, it is a good thing that you're raising money to advance your mission, but you're doing it at the expense of raising money to advance your mission over the long run. So it's a good thing, but it's so much worse than the ultimate good. That it's ultimately a bad thing. That's so, there's so much psychology that goes into that, you know, like ha having to understand how people react to certain things and what makes them want to give again, a lot, definitely a lot of psychology behind that. If somebody was interested in, you know, learning more about fundraising, I know you did uh, mention this earlier about our fundraising uh, school that we do have at LI. Where could they go? What could they do to learn more and get more involved with um, the fundraising world? Well, the very best place to start is at the Leadership Institute. We have wonderful fundraising trainings. The great thing about the LI fundraising trainings is that they bring in experts from all across the field who it's not just people at the leadership institute who learned about fundraising but it's a wide range of experts uh, who will teach you a wide range of techniques and it's a really great launching off spot to other things uh, not only is there in-person training at the leadership institute we have an international school of fundraising that i think is just one of the very best trainings that the leadership institute does and there's something about going somewhere uh, getting immersed for four or five days uh, with people who are the best at what they do, uh, talking about fundraising and with a group of people who care enough to invest in learning at, at that level about fundraising uh, that you just walk away with a whole lot. Uh, 
Uh, beyond LI training, uh, you, you can read books. The, the book, Bill Sturdivant's book, The Artful Journey, is probably the best way to get a big strategic view of how should, how should I think about working with donors over time. The Jerry Panis book, Asking, is a really short book. I think on the cover it says it's a 59-minute guide to how to ask for money. And it's the best guide to how do you actually mentally and, and philosophically position yourself and get ready to ask somebody for money. Um, there's books by Mel Warwick, who's actually helps fund, raise money for left-wing causes, but he writes books about what he does and you can learn from them too, uh, about how you can, uh, this revolution in the mailbox, uh, about how you can raise money that way. There are, there's a book by Ben Hart called Fund Your Cause with Direct Mail. Uh, that's a good overview of direct mail. Uh, there are, I absolutely love Jeff Brooks. Uh, so if you can't tell, there's lots of people who've written about fundraising. Uh, Jeff Brooks writes about writing. And so really whatever you're interested in, you can find books about those things. And Jeff Book, as a writer writing about writing, actually does a really good job with his books. Uh, they're super insightful and it will make you, whether you're doing fundraising writing or non-fundraising writing, it will make you better at uh, everything that you do if you read his books. So you can do that. And then uh, seek out mentors, uh, people who, who've been doing this for the while and pepper them with questions. Uh, and then uh, the last recommendation is uh, Kevin Gentry runs an email list and he writes emails every week uh, to the conservative community about what he's thinking about in fundraising. And they're really fantastic. They walk through structurally in, in little bite-sized pieces um, how do you apply fundraising to what's going on today in a world where the coronavirus is everywhere? Um, how do you think about prospecting? How do you think about direct mail? How do you think about major gifts? And so if you email him and sign up or, or email us at the Leadership Institute, we can help you get signed up. Uh, it's a great kind of drip in your inbox that will really accumulate knowledge for you over time. It seems like Steve Sutton has helped you get the most out of your uh, time with that saying. How do you get the most out of your time? You've read so many books. That That's amazing. That's great to hear. <laughs> um, but that's all the time I have for today. Uh, thank you, John, so much for joining me. I've, I've learned so much about fundraising. I don't know much about it. So I appreciate you taking your time with us today. Thanks, Tiffany. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Lead Your Future podcast. If you like this episode, please subscribe, share, or leave a five-star rating on iTunes, Spotify, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. It is the Leadership Institute's mission to increase the number and effectiveness of conservative activists and leaders in the public policy process. That's why I bring you on-camera TV trainings, public speaking workshops, debate workshops, speech writing workshops, and so many more. If you're interested in taking one of these trainings, feel free to check out our website at leadershipinstitute.org forward slash training. The Lead Your Future podcast is produced and edited by Tiffany Roberts with support from Jared Cummings. Advertisements by Alexander Chang and Christopher Olson. Executive produced by David Fenner and Morton Blackwell. If you want to learn more about the Leadership Institute and see behind the scenes photos, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to Leadership Institute on YouTube.